Now we're done once I tighten the braces. Awesome. Thank you. Put your hands together one more time for the Hawks. Thank you. All right, guys, different birds of prey with different hunting techniques. I'm sure that most of you know the osprey, fish hawk. They live around here. They dive into the water, catch fish, pull it out. They fly up onto a tree or on top of a big pole, and they eat the fish up there. Would never do me any good if I caught an osprey and I wanted to use it to catch fish because he's always going to take the fish up there to eat it. Not going to help. The hawks, I could take them out into the woods. They could catch a squirrel at the very top of the tree as it's jumping from one tree to the next. But once they catch the squirrel, they bring it right to the ground, they kill it, and that's where they're going to eat it. So I could walk over and pick them up. The falcon might go 2,000 feet up in the air and catch a duck that's maybe 600 feet up in the air. But when they land, they're going to land on the ground right there. I can walk right over to them and pick it up, and I've got something to eat. So this is the way it's done. We do not use the lure when we are hunting, but I am going to use the lure to have the falcon focus on where we are because this is not really a good area to hunt with a falcon. It'd be best to be on a horse, of course, out in about three or 4,000 acres of open meadows. The grass is tall. There may be partridge or pheasant hiding in the grass. I take my hunting dog. I send the dog out to the field. I keep the falcon on the fist while it's hooded. I show the dog my hand and I point left or I point right. And the dog puts his nose to the ground and starts to sniff. It's a pointer. And they sniff, 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 and doesn't stop. I put a bell on my dog. So if the bell stops, I know it found something because that means it's on the point. And when it stands in front of the partridge, it stands there and it doesn't do anything but shake because they get anxious. Then I take the falcon's head off and I let the falcon go. The falcon does what is natural. It circles and it goes right over me. It knows that in front of the dog there's a partridge and it waits on, we call it. When the falcon is waiting on, I run into the bush, chase out the partridge. Not the dog, I do it. Because if I had the dog do that, the dog might prematurely flush the partridge and will never catch it. So the dog's job is just to find the partridge. My job is to chase out the partridge. His job is to catch the partridge. It's partridge dinner. Hmm. Awesome. Four-year-old, the phantom. That's just me, so you know it's me next time. Oh, Unlike the hawks, they like to stand around. The falcon doesn't want to waste too much time standing around. The falcon wants to remain airborne, aerial. Starts off rather slow, but still faster than the hawk. Gets out, gets up, comes back fast. Each time the falcon comes in, it's going to come in a little bit faster. Each time the falcon goes out, it's going to go a little bit further. And it's going to get a little bit higher. So let's go for a few passes. I'm not gonna get Sometimes any shots. people in the I'm audience not, asking me, almost I'm begging me, come on, guy, why don't you be nice to your falcon and let the falcon catch that bird, the lure? You know what? I don't make it easy. If I were to make it easy for my falcon and my falcon was to be He's free beautiful. and get back out into the wild, it probably would never be able to survive if I made it easy for the nice bird. Fly them hard, work them hard. Feed them well, they get strong and very confident. Sometimes I'll get the bird to make 50 to 100 passes to the lure in the same fashion which you see here. We're not going to go for too much. On, uh, I love to hunt crows, but I'm not going to have him do that here. Because it may not end up right here in this field. Again, each time the falcon passes, my job is to get this bird close enough to the falcon that he could almost catch it. And if he hits it, he won. So, <laughs> name of the game is got to keep it close because if I don't put the bird close to the falcon, he's not going to want to play the game. Just like playing catch. I have to keep a real good eye on him because being that his name is Phantom, he is a sneak. Do I trust him? Hardly. <laughs> like I trust Hera. <laughs> I'm delighted for that she was really well behaved. I like when dogs should come and sit and enjoy the show. Soup, 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 soup. Oh, wow. Whoa. Oh, 
Go for a few more passes, then I'm going to call the shot. Just to keep it going, because we do have a schedule of events going on, and we are all so thankful that you guys managed to come out for our, our uh, Native American event here at uh, Reed Canal Park. And I travel so much sometimes, no, not sometimes, very often I forget where I am. Woo! I'm trying to focus on this fast flying machine. I'm going to give him three more passes after this. Three more passes. And on pass number four, he that has to like, hit yeah, the lure I'll, I'll to show that I've got control, that he's got the good. effort. He might go out further, he might get a little bit higher, he'll probably come in a little bit faster. This is a real trick wall here. I can't see through it. Woo! I'm not going to stand there. He's trying his games. We're still going to call that one. Even though he had to. He would have had to. All right, he's turning, he's looks oh over God. his shoulder, wonderful vision. There he comes, oh. the baby. Oh. Oh, he's he's up too many obstacles, so he had to recalculate. Again, he gets back up in the air, checks out the area, perhaps another approach. Make effort, here he comes. That's two. Going to go for pass number three, then tag on four. Tag means the Falcon has to hit it. Uh-oh. Oh, here he is. Oh, oh boy. Whoa, God. That means he's got to hit it now. It doesn't matter where he comes from and how fast. So let's see how it goes. <laughs> there you see that the long toes on the Falcon are not to enable the Falcon to make a large fist, but to make it simply easier for them to reach out and grab something at high speed. They grab their prey, sometimes at 200 miles an hour, they bring it to the ground, they bite their prey, they kill their prey, and then they stand regal in anticipation of being recovered because they are well-behaved creatures. Birds of prey are very important to us, friends. They are at the top of our food chain. They keep our environment healthy by feeding on old, weak, and sick creatures. Maybe some of your ancestors might have relied upon birds of this nature in helping them to survive, <laughs> having a fresh meal with the use of trained raptors through the sport of falconry. Trained falcons are flown at airports around the world. The mere presence of a falcon on the wing is just enough to scare away the wild birds that may otherwise get caught up in the engines of the airplane when you're landing and taking off. So birds of prey work with us in many ways, hand in hand, pretty much daily, and they keep the environment healthy, and they've helped many of us to survive. What's not to love? So, friends, I'm asking, all I'm asking is that you get to know these birds and read about them, and the best thing you can ever do to help them is simply leave them alone. So if you see a bird of prey make a fresh kill, wherever it might be, if it's not eating one of your own creatures, leave it alone. Don't get too close to get that perfect picture. Because if you bump the bird off the kill, it will have to go out and kill again needlessly. And what the bird's eating? Something that was probably already injured or ill. Birds of prey keep our environment healthy. If we didn't have them around, there would be a lot more disease. Again, I'm going to allow him to finish the remainder of his, of his reward. I want to give this chain. I hear he's, he's been so well behaved. I want to let him have a nice view of the falcon who has no interest in him at all. Because falcons only catch birds, so he would never have an issue with the dog. A dog, dog, well, and the fuck, like a dog, well, I guess you guys got to witness that firsthand. And again, I do apologize to the individual about that. I uh, didn't anticipate. Nonetheless, he gets his fresh meat, he got this, he got bones, he got meat, he got roughage, he got uh, calcium and protein. That's what they need to be able to survive. Get to know, read about them. Guys, I'm in the painted teepee over here, the, ye uh, the yellow, black, and red. If anybody has any questions about permits pertaining to birds of prey, I'm here for you, and I'll be delighted to point you in the right direction. Otherwise, if you go out and you get yourself a bird of prey, it's going to be a lot of trouble if you don't have a license. You're not even allowed to have a feather from any migratory bird. And friends, what I mean by that is not only birds of prey are protected by the government, all migratory birds are protected under the Lacey Act, which was passed in the early 60s, which protects every bird and every bone and every feather on the body of that bird. So nobody's allowed to have that. Only the Native Americans, because they use, and whatever they use, bones are all used for ceremonial purposes. It's a religious thing that they've been practicing here in the Americas 
for many, many, many hundreds of years. Eagles are certainly respected highest with birds of prey, especially with the native people. They are believed, not only are they the largest of the raptors, but they are believed to fly highest in the sky, closest to the heavens. We believe that it is on their wings that they take our prayers to the Creator, and so they're well respected. Again, guys, if there are any questions about the birds, you want to hear some other stories, I'll be over there. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Oh, Thank you. Can you take that picture? Anybody get that picture?